Uh, so I just thought I'd make a quick video about uh, my new quadcopter. So this is one I've built myself. Uh, the first home build I've made uh, and it's come out pretty nicely. Uh, I've not put a camera in there yet. Uh, so I've had a bit of a go at first person view and it's a bit scary to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to keep doing line of sight for a while until I've got the hang of, hang of it a bit. Um, I have actually bought a camera see here tiny um, but yeah this is the reason I've built my own is I bought this a couple of weeks ago and it was good fun and I was trying out acro mode and crashed it within about five seconds of acro mode and broke one of the arms uh, and stuff so I've had to order a spare part unfortunately no one in the nowhere in the UK seems to have any in stock at the moment so that's on its way from China. Um, but yeah, that's actually a really nice board. So as you can see, it's pretty sparse. There's only the receiver um, well, and the camera and the transmitter uh, and everything else. So the ESCs and the control board are all on this board, which just forms the bottom plane of the, of the quadcopter. So that's a really nice design, actually. Um, but obviously, when something goes wrong, it's it's an all or nothing thing. So I thought I'd build one myself. Uh, something I've actually wanted to do for a while. Uh, just I've got some various tinkerings in mind. Uh, and I like the idea of being able to hack on the firmware and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just opened it up uh, so you can see. Um, and yeah, so again, I've got the same receiver at the front. I've got a space here for a camera where I haven't got one yet. Uh, the the transmitter, I'm not even sure where I put that, it might be at the front or I've got loads of space at the back. Um, yeah, I just want to show you a couple of things I'm uh, quite proud of. So basically the, the board, so I've got the power distribution board at the bottom uh, and then the, the main, main board up there. Uh, and the board stands quite high uh, and so actually if you when you've got if you've got straight up pin headers like this when you've got something plugged into them uh, so for instance I've got a cable here uh, then oh, I've got plug in there. so yeah so that works with just one uh, but you'll see that gets squashed as soon as I put the lid on and even with just one I can't get the lid on there's a whole bunch there it's a pain uh, so I had tried uh, instead of using spacers, I tried just having a nut, but didn't have very good grip and things. So I came up with this little thing, which um, has got a bunch of sockets um, and just turns them into a right angle, uh, but also lowers the profile a bit as well. So the connectors actually come in lower than the, the top of the pins and also one from the side, one, well, one from two sides. Um, and I've split it up so this has... Uh, just the signal lines coming in here and the data lines here so uh, I guess I kind of did my reading beforehand and basically everyone suggests not having multiple power lines and ground lines going in so ground li lines I knew about because you don't want ground loops because uh, that causes interference but the power is interesting so actually driving multiple uh, multiple uh, voltage regulators to power the single line is actually puts quite a lot of stress on the regulators um, so yeah so that's quite a neat, neat little uh, gizmo and it also kind of then means I've got a couple of spare power lines out the back should I need them anyway uh, yeah but on that it's just a pretty standard CC CC 3D board uh, yeah that's pretty much it really um, yeah, I've got to say though, throughout this build, I've just been really impressed with uh, uh, the electric wing ma wingman who I bought the the the, kit, the bits off for actually both quadcopters, uh, and just the service has been phenomenal. Um, but with this quadcopter, I had a couple of teething issues. So when I got the ESCs, uh, three of the four didn't work originally. So the motors just wouldn't turn; they would kind of stutter two steps forwards, one step back. Never quite managed to turn the motor. Um, and I kind of discovered by trying out all the ESCs with, with a motor that, I, that did work, 
but it was definitely the ESCs. Um, and likewise, I could test all the motors were good using the working ESC. Um, but yeah, I contacted them uh, on Friday morning about it, and there was absolutely no quibble. They just sent out replacement ones uh, and even got Saturday, Saturday delivery. So I've been able to get this finished and out flying today. Uh, there's one more slight little uh, gotcha, which is so. Uh, one reason I tried, decided to try the CC 3D board this time instead of sticking with maze, um, which is what. So, this all in one board actually has a maze controller built in, um, but maze doesn't support. Well, uh, I say it doesn't support. Uh, maze supports PPM, but these new receivers, the uh, X8R, which are required for the Tyrannus now with the new firmware, um, don't support PPM, which is what the NAS supports. Uh, and that's been uh, replaced by SBUS on here, which the NAS controller doesn't support. So I've had to have this massive mess of wires, one per channel. Uh, whereas uh, with the CC3D, it does support SBUS. So I've got this single connection here for my inputs. Uh, and that obviously that's 16 channels over that, which is really useful. Um, but as you can see, it's one of those tiny connectors. I really hate these things, they're so fiddly. So you can see here's, here's a spare one here. You can just see it's absolutely tiny. And just even compared to the size of the pins at the other end, it's just ridiculously small. Um, and you'll see it's got loose, free loose, uh, four loose pins at the end. Um, and I discovered when I went out flying the first time this morning um, that the signal line from, kept wiggling its way out the receiver, which wasn't great. Um, so I decided to take the opportunity to um, to move all the signal lines for the ESCs into a single plug here, for, well, for the free. Obviously, the one providing power is doing the freeway. Um, and I took off one of so the powers here. Uh, you see I've got a freeway here and two singles. So where these two signals came from, I've used that freeway. Actually, no, I haven't. Those two are just spare. Um, I used one of the ESCs. is now also directly powering the receiver. Uh, it's a bit easier from this angle, actually. So you see here that uh, maybe you won't see it. Come on, also focus, focus. Right. So they... The S bus port to the receiver is now using one of the freeway plugs that comes directly from the ESC. So it's got its own power supply. And I've also recrimped in that just that single yellow wire, which is the signal, into that, that block of uh, pins. Um, so yeah, that's really neat as well. Um, and so that's why these two spare. No, they're, actually, they're just knocking around. I forgot where I put them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, so I haven't got a camera yet. I ordered a GoPro, uh, which would have been delivered to work while I was at holiday, hopefully. Um, and I wanted to do F FPV. Uh, and so I've got a little tiny, oh, crikey, so small. Um, yeah, a little tiny transmitter, uh, which could actually go at the front as well. Um, yeah. Uh, but having said that, I borrowed someone's FPV goggles over the week um, when I was on holiday and had a go with the Nighthawk before I totaled it. And to be honest, it was just scary because uh, I had no idea of how high I was. Um, I just, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't really know where it was at all times. And so I think I'm going to continue doing line of sight for a bit longer until I've more got the hang of, hang of flying it and doing things. And also try not to do acro mode straight away because that clearly isn't in my skill set yet. Um, yeah, the other thing is when it crashed, uh, so the light bar is, I realised I hadn't got any LEDs. The light bar, bent as it is, <laughs> it's come from the Night Nighthawk Pro. Uh, I thought I'd just salvage that because it's still nice and bright. Uh, yeah, here's underneath. You can see it's pretty tidy there. Um, oh, the other thing about this new receiver is it's got these stupid PCB antennas. So they need to be mounted at 90 degrees to each other and also uh, that plane as well. Um, so I've kind of attached them there. Still not particularly happy about it, but 
uh, just because I'm a bit worried that the carbon fibre might uh, interfere with the signal, but it seems to be holding up okay so far. Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> Tell me. So yeah, that's uh, my first home build. Uh, seems to fly pretty well. I've got these uh, O530 props on at the moment. Uh, so the Nighthawk had had some of these much bigger 6045s, which are quite a bit bigger. Uh, but it was very, very nippy. And I've got the same motors as I had on the on, on this one. Um, so I thought I'd just get some smaller props to get better hang of it uh, without necessarily crashing straight away. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll just show you a bit of my work lab as well. So I've got a nice big desk to work on, which is currently out of focus. Uh, yep, so nice big desk. Uh, got my laptop, which I was doing some coding on. Uh, this is my old laptop. Uh, nice little oscilloscope. Very handy. Yep, uh, th that featured in one of my videos the other day. Uh, computing area. And then that soldering station where this is a bit of a tip. These are all the components for my FPGA board. Uh, yeah, so nice, nice big work area. Uh, you can see from outside. Too small to go flying in, sadly. Uh, but yeah, um, so this is probably my first actual quadcopter video. Uh, hopefully I'll keep you up to date with some things in progress. Uh, this is actually one of the boards I was working on. Uh, so, when I, uh, so one day, a couple of days this week I've been working on this. So uh, just trying to get some telemetry working. Uh, Excuse me, receivers, you can do send your own arbitrary bits of telemetry data back. So, in theory, I thought I'd have a go at figuring it out. Uh, oh yeah, the only other thing to note with this board is I made the mistake of using absolutely massive 6mm core cable or 6mm squared cable. And this cable is such a such a faff, it just will not bend. It does, but it's very reluctant. So, um, I think if I was doing that again, I would use slightly smaller cable. Okay, I think that's me out. Cheers.